Hey everyone, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking up very loud, so if you can't hear me, um, here, I have a sore throat, um, actually I'm just starting to get over my sore throat, um, I wanted to mention this book, Radical by David Platt, um, it's a great book, uh, it makes you think about your relationship with Christ in ways that no other book for me has. Um, I wanted to read one part for you. Uh, this part, I've mentioned my youth director before in other videos on my other channel. Um, and it, uh, this part right here just makes me think about him. Um, it's the opening page of this book. And then I want to read to you as well is the um, funniest part I found in the book so far. The youngest mega church pastor in history. While I would despise that dispute that claim, it was nonetheless the label given to me when I went to pastor a large thriving church in the deep south. The church at Brook Hills in Birmingham, Alabama. On the th first day, I was immersed in strategies for making the church bigger and better. Arthur's I respect greatly would make statements such as, decide how big you want your church to be and go for it. Whether that's 5, 10, or 20,000 members. Soon, my name was near the top of the list of pastors of the fastest growing churches in the U.S. There I was, living out the American church dream. I just, I thought that was funny because a youth director, um, at one point we were the fastest growing church in, I think, Florida. Um, this is funny, part of this, and then there's another piece. Um, <laughs> so how was I to reconcile the fact that I was now pastoring thousands of people but the fact that my greatest example in ministry was known for turning away thousands of people. Whenever the crowd got too big, he'd say something such as, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Not exactly the sharpest church-growing ta tactic. I can also picture the looks on his disciples' faces, not the drink me speech. We'll never get on the list of the fastest growing movements if you keep asking them to eat and drink you. But the end, by the end of that speech, all the crowds had left and only 12 men remained. Jesus apparently wasn't interested in marketing himself to the masses. <clears throat> His invitations to potential followers were clearly more costly than the crowds were ready to accept. And he seemed to be okay with that. He focused and stood on the few who believed in him when he said radical things, and through their radical obedience to him, he turned the course of history in a new direction. Um, the funny part, uh, it didn't sound, to, you have to read it to understand why I say it's funny, um, was the whole eat me speech. That's really close. Um, I want to just stop for a second, because I'm only going to make this video about five minutes long, and I'll probably do another one. Um, my throat. As you can see, it's very swollen. So, I wanted to also point out, um, for those of you who um, are younger teenage girls, I have a lot of books on my desk. Okay, so I'm trying to move them. Um, there's a book called The Breakup Diary, or The Breakup Bible. Yeah, Breakup Bible. Um, I just started reading it, and I mean, I'm not thinking about breaking out with my boyfriend or anything, but it's hilarious. It's great. It's fun to read. Um, you should definitely read it for younger girls who have gone through the usual relationship of, oh my gosh, you're driving me crazy, but I love you type thing. Um, so check it out. Also, how excited are you? that the new Breaking Dawn, or Twilight movies coming out, uh, November 18th, I believe it is, I, w one website says 12th, one says 18th, um, either way, Breaking Dawn 
part one less than three weeks away I think it is so inside leave me a comment please I'd really like to know who's all going to go see the movie who has midnight tickets um I'd also like to see photos if you dress up or whatever so comment right there <laughs>